In the world of animation, Mankind has managed to produce some really fantastic cartoons that will stand the test of time, such as Lion King and Toy Story. Some, not so much. In fact, some are so fucking bad, they make you want to gorge your eyes out with a baby spoon. In all Don Blue's years as an animation director, he is responsible for the creation of some really great movies. Some of these titles include An American Tale, All Dogs Go to Heaven, and of course, the first ever The Land Before Time. But sadly, whereas he is responsible for some classics, he has also created some of the worst animation movies in history. And some of those titles include A Troll in Central Park, or otherwise known as A Pedophile in Central Park. And the other, where our discussion begins, probably the movie of Don's career that can be considered the start point where Don lost control of the car, smashed hard into a brick wall, ended up in a fiery car crash, and there were no survivors. That movie, ladies and gentlemen, is rock -a doodle The movie is about a storybook character named Sean DeClaire, who left his life on the farm behind when his friends turned their backs on him. A plan hatched by an owl named the Duke. I have some rather bad news. I guess birds of a feather don't always stick together. Now the Grand Duke is the big bad guy of the movie. He wanted Sean DeClaire off the farm so he couldn't call to the sun. With Sean DeClaire gone, he put his plan into motion by creating a major storm that will block out the sun for good. Not only does it cause problems in the storybook world, but also in the real world, where this annoying little kid and his family struggle to deal with the storm. When Edmund starts calling out to Sean DeClaire, the Duke comes to the real world and does us all a favor, and shuts his little ass up by turning him into a cat. But before the Duke could eat him, he manages to get away with a couple of friends, who, despite being part of the reason why Sean DeClaire left the farm in the first place, are willing to travel to the city, kiss his tail feathers, and get him to come home and save them. And whatever became of Sean DeClaire, you may ask? He found a job in the city and became known as the King, aka modeled after Elvis Presley, and I shit you not for those that are new to the movie. Well, now that you are caught up on the story so far, this is where our furry girl star comes in. Meet the love interest of Sean DeClaire, the out of this world sexy Goldie Pheasant. Boy, that Sean DeClaire sure is a lucky guy. I bet you she gets some excellent hand jobs. Now, if I was a chicken, I sure would cross the road to tap that. I bet you there are a lot of other guys that would like to stick their cock in her up, doodle do. I wouldn't mind ruffling her tail feathers. That chick sure is finger licking. <laughs> Yeah, I think I just lost a couple more female subscribers. Despite the chicken jokes, however, Goldie is not a chicken. She's a pheasant, as her last name says. And in the beginning, she could not stand Sean DeClaire. With Sean DeClaire being the big star on campus, Goldie was forced to do minor singing roles. And she couldn't stand him for it. By the way, not only is Goldie sexy, she's sweet, kind, and a bit overly dramatic too. Pinky! Pinky, how could you? Anything but the Q word? Not quit! It's like Pinky held her up at gunpoint. Was acting like this really necessary? And since we're here, if you don't recognize her voice actress already, she is voiced by Ellen Green. You know, the girlfriend from Little Shop of Horrors. Come on and give me a drink. I, I don't know if I should. Hey, little lady, be nice. See, you talk to singing. Um, I've seen enough hentai to know where this is. Oh, fuck it. Now, despite Sean DeClaire's newfound fame and fortune, it could not fill a void in his heart. He started feeling lonely. This helps Pinky devise a plan when he is contacted by the Duke, a.k.a. his boss. It sounds bad, Pinky. Pinky decides to pull Goldie into the plot by twisting the truth about Edmund and his friends, and has her play distraction to keep Sean DeClaire away from them. In this infamous scene by Goldie, she reminds us that her character was inspired by Jessica Rabbit. While Goldie was seducing Sean DeClaire, she sneakily takes the paper airplane out of his hand. 
That paper airplane was an urgency letter, tossed moments earlier by Edmund, which will come into play later. The thing is, barely even 5 minutes later and Pinky's plan is already going up in smoke. Goldie was supposed to pretend to fall in love with him, but a few moments with the king and already she's fallen in love with him. For real! When Edmund couldn't get through to Sean Declare directly, he decided to go to the source, Goldie herself. Now, what are you doing in my dressing room? Edmund manages to sneak into Goldie's trailer in order to tell her the situation. But when she figures out Edmund is the cat Pinky was telling her about, she freaks out. No, don't scream! Well, if things weren't bad, they got worse for Edmund in the game, when Pinky succeeded in catching them all. By the time Goldie came to the realization that she had screwed up, it was already too late. While on the set for shooting a movie, Goldie secretly pulls him to the side to tell him the truth. Goldie gives him the letter that she snuck away from him earlier. Unfortunately, Pinky was listening in on the conversation. When Sean Declare refused to finish the film, Pinky blackmailed him by threatening the lives of his tied up friends. Sean Declare, however, wasn't without his tricks in order to escape the studio. While on the run from Pinky, Goldie helped him find the trailer. However, thanks to Goldie's long hair, he bursts through the trailer window and is knocked out by a frying pan. The gang sneaks and knocked out Sean Declare through the air vent, where they hijack Pinky's car. Okay, time out. A character named Pinky with a pink car. Why does this look so familiar? Didn't I tell you I was gonna buy your ass if you hit something else? Nope, I hear that boy, Pinky. After you hit that little retarded boy with the fucked up ball. He's still breathing. When Peepers the female mouse accidentally falls out of the car, the rescue turns into a quick emergency. Just as things look bad for Goldie, Edmund, and the others, it turns out Peepers ends up rescuing them instead. With Pinky's hijacked helicopter, they flew back towards the direction of the farm. Meanwhile on board, as Goldie tried to nurse Sean Declare back to consciousness, the Duke's pestering nephew resurfaces again. When it was time for Sean Declare to face off with Duke, Goldie would join in on the chant with the rest of the animals in order to defeat Duke once and for all. The last time we see Goldie is towards the end, sporting some brand new Daisy Dukes. Her and Sean Declare are now married with two kids that are sitting on the fence. Well, thanks everybody for watching Furry Girl Profile's Goldie Pheasant. After dealing with this movie, I need a drink, and I don't even drink.